Coming up in this video, I'll show you how I paint a halfling rogue for Dungeons & Dragons from the WizKids Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures line of unpainted figures. everyone welcome back to mini junkie my name is Jarrett uh, so thanks to all of you who responded to the channel update I posted recently it was really encouraging and and great to have the positive uh, encouragement so uh, thanks for that uh, in this video I'm gonna start um, painting uh, character models for people for uh, to sell on eBay for Dungeons and Dragons and Pathfinder and things like that just to test the waters um, see how the market is and you know help fund buying more miniatures to paint for the channel and, and more supplies and things like that to keep things going. I'm also um, considering starting a Patreon channel. I know a lot of people do have those who have painting um, channels on YouTube. I don't know what real sort of benefits or uh, reward tiers I can offer, but I still might set something up just as basically a glorified tip jar, which there's also a tip jar link down below. Uh, because uh, this is an expensive hobby and it would just be helpful for me to be able to keep up with it uh, if you're able to pitch in. Enough of that. So let's, uh, I'm going to start the video a little differently this time. You'll see what I mean in a sec. Uh, but let's get to painting this really, really small miniature, this little halfling rogue. She's pretty cool. So guys, I thought what would be interesting uh, for this video is to go through my thought process on how I approached painting this miniature at the start of the video so that as you watch the various steps, you see where I'm going with it and why I'm doing the things I'm doing um, as I, you know, just framing up my approach to the miniature. She's really small. Um, it's probably hard to tell on the video, but she's, for example, here's um, Princess Leia from Star Wars Legion. You can kind of see that this girl barely comes up to her waist so the halfling is appropriately tiny um, and lots of really really small details so for a miniature where it's probably going to be sitting on you know in the middle of a table of people playing D&D &D is kind of what I'm thinking people are going to buy this for if I put it on eBay uh, she needs to really have some pop and some sharp highlights and some interesting contrast and brighter colors just so that she stands out and isn't just like this little black blob. Like it, as a as a rogue, you'd, you'd sort of first think, okay, black armor, dark hair, whatever. And that's fine but thematically, but she'll be really boring um, on the table if you do that. So what I did is I did still do the majority of the armor in black, um, but I did give some brighter highlights to it without sort of making it not black. Uh, and then I added areas of interest like the leather sort of bits of leather banded armor um, and her pouch just to bring out some details that are a different color um, this is almost certainly supposed to be chainmail but I painted it more like a, a brown leather leather kind of material uh, and of course her hair I decided to make it bright orange orangey yellow so that she's got more interesting character to her um, there's nothing to say that rogues can't be gingers and um, and then when it came to the base, uh, she comes with a really small round base in the package that's like a dime dime size or so. I figure most of the characters she'd be adventuring with are probably going to be on like a 25 millimeter base. So I put her on that and just added some rough sort of dungeony ground. And I also added a skull just to create some detail. Um, it's maybe a teensy bit too big. Um, it's obviously not a halfling skull. But it could be, you know, an orc skull or something. And uh, the trick here is that you don't want to have the skull fit fighting with the face. So, for example, the skull could have been really bright bleached bone, but then what would happen is your eye keeps going back and forth between these two. So I made sure that even though it's highlighted and stuff, I do dull that down so that it's an interesting detail, but really your eye should still come back to the face. And I intentionally made her face fairly bright, light skin I didn't want her to look dead or you know super pallid but still fairly you know quite fair uh, yeah so that uh, her face would be the focal point of the major and <clears throat> the other thing I did again here's another bag on the back where I've done a light color just to make it stand out most of the video you'll see the the knives are silver or the daggers are silver by the end of it I decided to add the the blood effect because a she should be badass and cutting the throats of her enemies in battle and B the knives are so small and that sort of plasticky nulzers um, pre-paint uh, sorry unpainted material 
that the the detail wasn't as crisp as I would have liked and I wasn't able to clean it up very well without sort of mangling it so I instead I just kind of covered it with this blood effect which uh, helps it look a lot better in my opinion and then when it came down to her armor is so small and the detail is you know it's not perfect because it is a, a plastic miniature some sort of production method I'm not familiar with but um, so I used a black ink which would be very very thin and still allow some of that detail to come through without being completely lost in, in a harsh black uh, thicker paint. Uh, I think that's it for now. That's a quick explanation of how I approach painting her and why she looks the way she does. And now we'll get into sort of like the step by step of how I painted her. All right guys, let's get started. First of all, they come, these Nulzers Marvelous Miniatures come pre-primed, so I did not change that primer. I'm gonna start out with the hair. I'm using Scale 75 Intensi Intensity Yellow Ink. You can use any yellow base color you like, just uh, we're gonna coat all of the hair in a yellow base coat. Next up, I blocked in all the armor with this um, Vallejo Game Ink Black. Uh, what I like about this, when it's over a light primer, it, it effectively takes on highlights from the underpainted effect. Uh, because the lightness shines through on the on the highest edges of the of the paint, and also it it helps preserve some of the detail because it's a very very thin, uh, well it's not even paint it's ink. I used Vallejo Gaming sepia over the leather areas like the uh, armor patch things on her forearms, and the bags and satchels. I really like how it creates sort of a mottled leather effect. This next step is really easy. Take any light metallic color, I used the silver here, and just paint the two blades. For her pants, I used a base of Incubi Darkness. At this point, I decided to do her gloves black, so I went back and did them with the Vallejo Black ink as well, same as the armor. There's two textured strips on the front of her armor that are probably meant to be chainmail underneath, but I did them as like a leather texture with Vallejo brown ink as a glaze. The hilts of the two daggers I did in Viking gold from scale 75. Just like uh, a lot of steps, you can choose any gold you like. Uh, a lot of people have Games Workshop, so you could use uh, Retributor armor or, uh, for example, Balthazar gold. This step we change her from a blonde to a ginger, a redhead. Uh, you take Fugin orange and just right out of the pot, just coat it right over the yellow. The yellow will shine through the, the glaze, effectively glaze, and uh, create a really nice highlighted bright um, redhead look. Next up I highlighted the pants with Thunderhawk blue. I wanted to create some brighter highlights on the leather areas like the pouches and things so I used Karak Stone as a first step just to paint in some highlights and pull out the detail. Then I did an additional highlight with Screaming Skull on those same areas but just very very lightly on things like corners, the sharpest corners, edges and things like that because we're not trying to create a bone look really, we're just trying to help the detail pop out from a distance. Little straps behind her boots, I just gave those a glaze of browning just to kind of change the color of those, um, make them a little different. Nothing special here. Alright, for the first base coat of her face, I used Cadian Flesh Tone. Thin that down, use my wet palette. You want to give a quick all-over coat. Make sure, and you may want to do two thin coats depending on how your coverage is. What you don't want to do is do it slowly in a way that will, will start to create any brush strokes because it'll start to dry because that's really hard to fix, especially on a face. You want a quick, smooth coat and make sure you get it all over with no patchiness. The base is pretty simple. I used Xandri Dust as a base coat for the skull. I don't think I even recorded that step because it's so simple. And the rest of the base is done first with a coat of Adeptus Mechanicus Grey. Kind of a vaguely bluish grey. Because of the way I used that black ink and it did create some highlights that came through because of the light primer, um, highlighting it was a little tricky. So what I did is I first used uh, Skaven Blight Dinge, which is a 
you know, kind of a medium gray tone, a little bit of a brownish gray, actually, just to start pulling out some of the highest points in the folds of cloth and things like that, sharper edges of the armor. Then I followed that up with Dawnstone, very similar, uh, the, the sharpest edges, points and corners and things like that, just like we did with the Screaming Skull on the leather in a previous step. For the skull on the base, I did a fairly big highlight, um, you know, in terms of covering almost the entire skull with Ushapti bone. And I don't plan to take it brighter than that because I said at the beginning of the video, I don't want the skull to fight for attention with uh, the rogue's face. This next step is really tough to see on the video, but I used the black ink and I went and sort of did a bit of a black lining treatment because she's so small to help some of the detail areas be separated. So black between her boots and her pants or black shading underneath armor panels, things like that, just to create some rich shadows. I wanted to avoid using similar colors on her armor as the base, but in this case I did use Dawnstone as a first dry brush of the uh, dungeon floor because I couldn't think of a different sort of lighter medium gray to use. Then I used Agrax Earthshade out of the pot. I gave a heavy coat to the skull, again dulling it down, making it look ancient and decrepit and dim. And then I did some splotches of this color around various points in the base, so that when I do the final highlight, you'll see some tonal variation in it. At this point, her face is dry, the, the Cadian flesh tone, and now I just go in with Reichland Flesh Shade, and I'm doing a fairly targeted wash. I'm not just splotching it all over. I'm doing it in the corners and eye sockets, corners of her eyes, and around the nose and mouth, a little bit on the, under the cheekbones, and around the hairline. While the flesh wash is drying, the, the Agrax at this point is dry on the base, so it's a final all-over highlight with administratum gray dry brush and avoiding the skull of course so it's just the rocky parts. I wanted her face to be quite bright when she's finished so first I do a 50-50 mix of Cadian flesh tone and Kislev flesh and then I add in some glaze medium. I find glaze medium helps with uh, trying to blend and feather in highlights. I opted not to speed this part up in case, you know, really it's where I spent the most time on the miniature and was trying to create the most impact was the focal point, which is her face. So I'm leaving this, um, you know, video por portion in real time so you can see how I painted her face. Still working on camera angles. I apologize that you can't really get as good of a look as you might want. And I'll continue to figure out how to make that better. But hopefully you can see I'm applying it to things like the forehead, the cheekbones, the bridge of her nose, the tip of her nose, the tip of her chin, things like that. And and then leaving the, you know, under the cheekbones and around the, around the skull temple area and stuff, um, leaving that darker. First highlight, I use premium white uh, primer. It's really just a white paint anyway, and I like that it's uh, quite thin because it's made for airbrushing. So the white can sometimes be chalky. So um, I use something like that was pre-thinned, and that way I could keep, you know, it's already on the wet palette. It's already been given the glaze medium, but just wanted to keep it flowing nicely, keep it thin. Um, yeah, and I used white. I normally wouldn't go for a stark white as a highlight, sort of color. You could use like a bone or even a much lighter, like a pallid flesh or something. But in this case, I am trying to make her face fairly dramatically bright. So that's why I went right for, I basically added a drop of white to the previous mix.
The second highlight on her skin is the same thing, one drop of white in the previous mix. I believe I added a bit more glaze medium to make sure we were keeping uh, the consistency flowing nicely and then continuing to really get sharp on the cheekbones and, and whatnot. For the mouth and the uh, basically her bottom lip, uh, I put a thin line of Caroberg Crimson shade without thinning it or anything. I just took it out of the pot. Just carefully hold your breath when you're doing that and just ran the, I'm even doing it with my finger right now, my own lip, I don't know why, um, run it across their mouth and just create some, some pinkishness in the lower lip. All right, for the eyes, I used Menoth White Highlight, which is not quite a, a stark white for, you wanna use something that's more like a, an ivory for eyeballs, or they'll look too cartoonish. And just, I held my breath and braced my hands as best I could and just go very slowly. And even then I was having trouble and I did have to eventually go back and sort of restore some of the eye socket with some Reichland shade because I, I put too much of the white. She's so tiny, I would, I would, vi I would suggest you almost don't even have to paint her eyes if you didn't want to. Then the pupils, I use Themar Black, uh, and then I thin that a little bit and create a rounded tip on the brush. And just same thing, hold your breath. And I'm using my old man reading glasses to see very closely. And even, even with that, I had a tough time and I, I gave her one pupil that was much too big and I, I did have to go back and correct that using basically the final skin highlight to basically restore things like the brow and, and the under, you know, underneath the eyelid and stuff like that. So yeah, because of the mistakes I made, I did take the Reichland flesh shade and go back and try to restore her eye sockets a little bit because I had overdone the white. And at this point I added a blood effect. I just stipple blood for the blood god onto the blade, trying to make it look like, you know, splattered streaky blood. And I also added in a little touch of black ink uh, at a second step to get some sort of gory look to it. Because you don't want it to be just one tone of red. And here she is, she's pretty small. She's dwarfed by this actually pretty small mirrored rotating table, but hope you like the finished model. I had a lot of fun painting her and I'm looking forward to painting more Dungeons and Dragons characters. Post below if you have any character suggestions because I actually don't know what's what's the most popular these days. Um, please consider sharing the, the video if you found it helpful and, and like the video if, if you felt that way. And we'll see you next time.